All right, what's up my brothers? So in this video, I wanna help some of you uh, single dads out a little bit. Um, I did a podcast the other day with some of the guys from my community. And we were talking about online dating and how to have some better success with that. And um, one of the questions that came up that I feel like needs to be dedicated uh, to you guys out there is the single dads don't usually get a lot of love and often uh, seem to struggle quite a bit. A lot of the complaints that I've heard, um, you know, things around, do you mention that you have kids? Do you mention their age? Uh, depending on the app and, you know, like, some of the guys even tend to complain that they come across women oftentimes that uh, won't date them because they're a single dad. And in many cases, it's single mothers that completely want to bypass a man with uh, children already. So I want to help you kind of reframe your mindset with that a little bit more, fellas, and offer some clarity for those guys that keep asking, hey, you know, what are you doing in the McLaren? Where are you going? Well, heading back to the dealership, uh, there was some fixture off the back that um, was missing when I took it in for a track inspection uh, a couple weeks ago, and they wanted me to bring it back just to make sure that it's staying put. Uh, such is life with a McLaren. Moving on to the subject of single dads though now. So the first thing that I wanna cover is what's known as sexual market value. I am not gonna get into the entire notion of it and explain it all over again. Instead, what I'll do is I'll put a card up on the top right. You can watch the full video on that. But uh, the TLDR version, the too long didn't read version is, uh, women peak in their value, you know, their level of attractiveness to, to the opposite sex around the age of about 22, 23. Men, it's in their mid to late 30s. Uh, that can sometimes be pushed back into the 40s depending on how you live your life and lifestyle choices. Uh, this will be disputed till the end of time by um, feminized women plugged into lies and white knight plugged in betas as well. Um, they're gonna be like, hey man, you can't say that about girls, but the truth of the matter is, and this comes from evolutionary psychology studies, uh, they surveyed men from around the world and when asked um, or, or, or shown pictures of women in different age increments, anywhere from 20 all the way up to like 70, it didn't matter if they asked a 18 year old uh, boy <coughs> all the way up to a 70 year old man, they uh, unanimously all chose approximately 20, 22 to 23 year old women as the most beautiful that they were presented with when asked to rate them on a level of attraction. You can't get away from it. That is how evolution has worked. That's how society works. Argue it all you want. You'll be disappointed if you want to believe lies, but that's fine. Men, on the other hand, uh, we peak later on in lives. Our value is based on making something out of ourselves. Uh, men need to compete, women choose. That's just the way things are. And a man's value when he's 20 is nowhere near as high as it can be uh, in his mid to late 30s. If he's done the work on himself, if he's maintained a strong masculine physique, if he knows how to make bank, all that good stuff. So um, those are those components. So what I wanna do is I wanna compare um, men versus women. Let, let's take two 40 year olds, because that seems to be like the average number that I get a lot of guys asking this question on. So if you take a 40 year old guy with two kids in tow, let's say two small children from a prior marriage, he got married in his 20s, uh, had a couple of small kids in his 30s, and he ends up you know, getting divorced in his late 30s, and let's say he's 40 now and he's out there dating, he's on dating apps, he might be talking to women uh, you know, as he goes about his day. And the same thing with a, uh, a woman, let's take a 40-year-old woman, two small kids in tow, same story, got you know married in her early 20s, and now she's available on a sexual marketplace and she's looking for a good guy sort of thing. If you take those two and you compare them side by side, Generally speaking, more often than not, the guy is of higher sexual market value than a woman. Um, there's a number of reasons for that. The biggest ones are, well, first of all, um, men don't carry babies for nine months. I mean, having a child does a number on your body. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite stressful. I mean, if you've ever uh, been married or if you've had a child with any woman, you're gonna know that they go through a lot. Uh, those guys out there that are watching this that don't understand, just pay attention and trust me on this. They go through a lot. And having kids can do a number on a woman's body. There's those out there that'll argue, and I've said this before as well, you know, there's a lot of women that can do quite a bit of work on themselves uh, to increase their value. Uh, they can work out, they can lose the uh, baby weight. Um, a lot of the times, you know, breastfeeding and stuff like that can, and gravity and time can do a number on, uh, you know, the lady parts, they can fix those with, you know, some plastic surgery, very simple stuff, doesn't cost a lot of money. You know, they can certainly increase that, 
Um, but at the end of the day, the guy doesn't go through the uh, burden of, you know, uh, basically carrying a child for nine months and pushing it out of his body. He just doesn't. So from the optics of attraction and beauty, because women are beauty objects to men, men are success objects to women, this is going to upset some people. Oh, we're all the same and all that sort of thing. We're not. I mean, evolutionary psychology and everybody's all like, trust the science, believe the science. Go look it up if you don't believe me, okay? Uh, the Evolution of Desire by David Buss is a great book. You can check it out. It's pinned in my Amazon bookstore uh, down below. It's definitely worth looking at if you want to get some more clarity on how these things work. So side by side from the optics of attraction, if the guy's taking care of himself, his value should be higher than hers. Even if she's taking care of herself, his value is still going to be higher than hers. There's no way around it. It just is what it is. The sun is hot, water is wet. Men are just generally, you know, age better. You know, there's there's an old saying that, you know, men, a, a, a good guy can age like a fine wine, if you see what I'm saying. But that, of course, takes work. I mean, if you have bad lifestyle choices, if you're fat, if you're, you know, if you haven't taken care of yourself, if you're like not carrying a, a look, you know, if you will. A lot of guys don't have much in the way of, of style or a look going on. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, mostly like, you know, beta plugged in men or, um, you know, these like toxic feminists will point and sputter at me like, ah, rich, you're bald, and it's like, so what, you know? Like, uh, about half the male population by the time they're 40 is either got full on hair loss or experiencing a good amount of hair loss. Um, just you know, deal with it, right? And, you know, there's different remedies you can go through. My solution is, of course, uh, don't bother holding on to scraps and just shave it right down. Uh, I'm not even completely bald. I actually have, you know, a decent amount. But have a look, you know, figure out what your look is and kind of roll with it. Like, that needs to be your style and you need to kind of go with it. You need to own it. Most guys don't do that. So one of the things that I want to talk about when I'm talking to you guys about this sort of stuff is make sure that you've leveled up and you've done everything to max out looks max, money max, all that sort of stuff, you've maxed out on your attributes that are attractive to the opposite sex. Um, you know, I've said earlier that men are success objects to women. Uh, having money is good, having a lot of money is great, but it's not always gonna be enough. If all that you're gonna rely on is having money, then all that you're gonna get is women that want your money, okay? Uh, women are dualistic in their mating strategy. They, they basically go alpha seed, beta need. Uh, sometimes, you know, well, more often than not, that involves two different guys. There, you know, there's the alpha chat and then there's the beta sort of provider that's essentially the ATM. And there's been lots of guys throughout history um, you know, and there's probably guys in the comments watching this right now and you're going to comment below and like, yeah, you know, that was me at one point. I was a beta bucks. Um, they're the typical guys that just, you know, let themselves be used like a plow horse and they bend over backwards to supplicate others without even considering, you know, what's good for them. So when it comes down to the attraction component of it, again, you've got to be able to make sure that you cover everything, you do the work, um, you know, you've leveled up in every area possible. And even if you take them side by side, again, the guy is generally going to be more attractive than her at the same age. I mean, it's why you see so many guys in their 40s dating women that are 10, 15 years younger, or even 20 years younger sort of thing. And then a lot of women that are, you know, successful professionals, they've got their degrees on the wall, framed in mahogany with little letters after their name. You hear a lot of them complaining um, on, uh, you know, media and a lot of these like toxic feminist sort of uh, publications will say things like, there's a shortage of successful professional men uh, today or, you know, men in their 40s are, are babies. They don't want to date women, you know, their own age. Why are they dating women younger and blah, blah, blah. It's like, because they can. Um, if you've done the work and you're a successful guy, there's lots of dudes out there that I know that I've consulted or even in my group that are very successful, high net worth individuals that don't even bother with women their age that are divorced with kids in tow and they've got a younger, hotter, you know, uh, more beautiful, more attractive girlfriend. Not all of them, but it's, but it's very, it's, it, it's a lot more common than you think, if I can put it that way, you know, if you see what I'm saying. So just understand it from that perspective. Now, the other part of the equation is, um, there's a lot of very wealthy women. I apologize for the road noise. Carbon tub, it transmits all the sound into the cabin, but this is gonna end in a second. There's a lot of women around the same age as guys that have acquired a good amount of wealth. And when I say a good amount, I'm talking a lot. Um, I think there was a couple of reports and, and publications put out at one point that were talking about uh, some of the richest women in the world, like the billionaires out there. And the vast majority of them did not acquire their wealth 
through you know doing the work, uh, starting businesses, you know, or anything like that. It was either inheritance uh, from uh, Daddy Warbucks money, or it was money from a divorce, so alimony, child support, you know, the the division of family wealth, you know, if you will. So there are some women out there that have some money or have acquired some success. So let's take those same two people and stick them side by side. I think I gotta stay off the highway, otherwise that'll make too much noise. Um, you know, we'll stick them side by side. The same 40 year olds with the same two kids in tow from the prior relationship, and they've, uh, they've got the same job. So let's say that we're dealing with, uh, you know, 40 year old, couple of professionals, they make $150,000 a year. So the pool of dateable woman women, sorry, to the 40 year old guy with the two kids in tow is greater than the pool of available men to the 40 year old professional with two kids in tow making the same money as the guy. And let me explain why. Guys are very happy to date anywhere on the socioeconomic scale. In fact, most guys will date across and down. It's, it's not that uncommon for a dude making $150,000 a year at that age to date a $35,000 a year hairdresser. It's, it's common. It's widely accepted. But women don't like to date across and down. Women's preference is dating across and up on the socioeconomic scale. So a woman making $150,000 a year is only going to date a guy, generally speaking, making around that amount, or they're going to prefer a lot more. That's why you hear a lot of these complaints from a lot of these professional women. There's no dateable guys our age. A lot, you know, these guys are like man children. They're only dating younger women. Why aren't they giving us attention? We're all sassy and boss girl and all this sort of shit. And truthfully, guys don't want sass. They don't want boss girl. They want a nice, agreeable woman. They don't want to go and chase excellence all day and come home from that, you know, to be lectured about something or to sort of thing. You know, they get chirped about everything. They really don't want that. They want they want a feminine beauty that's agreeable and pleasant. That's a compliment to her life, not a focus of their life. So that so that woman that's the same age as that guy has a much smaller dating pool available to her than the guy the same age making the same money with the same kids in tow. So to kind of update your beliefs, fellows out there, I'm talking to you single dads, you know, specifically, to update, you know, those beliefs, understand that your value is quite a bit higher than what you've been led to believe that it is. You've been sold a bill of goods. You've been sold a whole bunch of lies your entire life. You know, they always tell women, you do what's right for you, girl. But they tell guys, you just do what's right. Okay, so it's two different sets of narratives, two, set, two different sets of lyrics. You don't need to believe the lies and succumb to the BS. If you're, if you're doing the work on yourself, if you're a high value guy, if you've made bank, you know how to put a dent in the universe, you know how to make it rain and make big, big money, you're competent, you can solve problems, you live in a strong masculine body, you're not fat or obese or overweight. I mean, that alone puts you in like the top 20%. I think something like two thirds or close to three quarters of the North American population is in, a, is in categories where BMI levels are either fat, obese, morbidly obese, something like that. They're generally not fit, okay? That's all North Americans, generally speaking. So. If you've taken care of yourself at 40 and you live in a good, strong, masculine body with a nice V taper, you got nice shoulders and a narrow waist, you know, you got yourself together, you're pleasant, you know how to have good conversation, you got a sense of humor, blah, 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 like all that big stuff, the big long list of all the stuff that women want, it doesn't matter if you have kids in tow, you're literally the cream of the crop. Believe it or not, you're literally the cream of the crop. And if you don't believe me, I'm gonna put another card up on the top right of that podcast that I did. Uh, with a bunch of the guys from my community. I think there was at least two or three guys in there that were single dads uh, that expressed they have no problem whatsoever dating on the sexual marketplace, on dating apps, getting matches, getting dates. It doesn't matter that they have kids. Here's the last and final thing that I want to cover before we wrap up. There's something called pre-selection. And what pre-selection is, uh, essentially defined is, women want to be with guys that other women want to be with and other men want to be, okay? So if you're a guy that has, you know, children, and I'm assuming, you know, you're smart, you got it together, because that's usually the guys that are watching my channel. Uh, so you wifed up a woman that's attractive and you made attractive babies, then you're gonna have good looking kids. And she's gonna look at that. She's gonna look at the kids and be like, oh, look at her eyes, she, you know, she's so pretty, she's so beautiful, or, you know, your son's so handsome, blah, blah, blah. Whenever you hear that, you probably will, the way that you handle it is you just basically kind of smirk. It's called amuse mastery. You kind of smirk, you kind of shrug it off, or you laugh a little bit, and you say something along the lines of, 
yeah, I know, I make beautiful kids. And you kind of move on from that. So that, so that pre-selection in her hindbrain, and again, I'm talking about this from an evolutionary perspective of how women behave. They will, they will look at that and say, oh, that guy's, you know, he's, he's the hot dude and he's got beautiful kids and a beautiful woman chose him to have those kids. So, you know, blah, blah, blah sort of thing. As long as you've got financial resources, right? And it's not all going to her and you're living in your parents' basement. You got completely, you know, divorce raped and you've got no money left, left over whatsoever. As long as you've got your act together, you're probably more often not going to be just fine. You don't have to be a multi-zillionaire or anything like that. As long as you have your act together. And of course, you know, the, the, the more impressive your act is, the better off you're going to be. You know, that's why I always tell you guys, do the work. Chase excellence, not women. Not a lot of people like to pay attention to this. They don't like that I say that there's things that you have to do to improve yourself. You know, God forbid. It's like, you know, you're not just good enough, guys. Forget about those lies that you've been told by, you know, society your entire life. You know, just, just showing up and being a nice guy doesn't, doesn't work, you know. Take that belief, unplug it, take it around behind the back of the barn, beat it with a stick, end it, bury it six feet under. It's not true. It's a lie. You have work to do. The burden of performance is on men, okay? That's just the way that it is. Proof of this, before I go, is uh, throughout history, men have typically run harems, okay? Uh, the most successful men. There's a book by the title of Alpha God, written by Dr. Hector Garcia. You can check it out if you want, you know, for reference. Um, the most recent example, I believe, is in the 1800s. His name was uh, Ishmael the Bloodthirsty. He was a Moroccan sultan. And he sired, I think, over a thousand children, uh, had, uh, something like 20 wives and uh, several concubines, like hundreds of concubines. So there's never throughout history been rich, successful, powerful women that have ever run large harems and concubines of men. It just doesn't happen, but it happens with men. Why is that? Why do women, you know, accept that? Because it's fine. It's from, from an evolutionary perspective in their high brain, it's okay. Women don't care generally speaking, if you're having sex with other women, as long as you're not taking away financial resources from her and her offspring, as long as they're taken care of, okay? That's why a guy like Ishmael the Bloodthirsty in the 1800s could run a harem of all these women, multiple wives, and by the way, they were all protected and guarded by uh, eunuchs. So he would essentially sterilize a bunch of men who would guard his women so that other dudes would not, you know, get with her or anything like that. Um, so. There you have it. You know, there's a couple of interesting points that I think get overlooked and aren't talked about that often. And I think guys need to hear this story because, I mean, let's be honest, fellas. You know, we're basically treated like, you know, disposable heroes out there. You know, again, they always tell women, you know, you do what's right for you, girl. Guys are just told, you just do what's right. So just marinate on that a little bit and understand that there's probably some work that you got to do on yourself if you're not getting great results with women. Uh, you can check out those two links that are provided on the two top cards above. Uh, there's links pinned below in the top comment if you want to get in touch with me for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Join my men's community. Definitely grab my book. If you haven't read The Unplugged Alpha, it's available on Amazon. It's become a bestseller. Um, it's pretty much displaced all the other uh, garbage dating books out there, and it adds the clarity that guys need to hear when it comes to understanding who they are, what their value in the world is, and how to put themselves first so that they can have great experiences and results in life. And that's not at the, you know, to the detriment or to the uh, nightmare expense of women. It actually helps women. A lot of women have reached out to me and said, hey, Rich, you know, I'm glad you're putting this stuff out. You're making men better. So if any of this hurts you as a woman, just understand, you know, bombers only get flack when they're over the target, okay? That's just the way that it is. It's just true. And guys, if you haven't been getting the great results uh, that you're expecting or hoping for, like some of the biggest complaints is I always hear guys are like, oh, they're just no attractive women or they're all, you know, women today are, are garbage or, you know, there's some like nonsense lyric out there. It's simply not true. There's a lot of wonderful, beautiful women out there uh, that would love to be a compliment to a man's life. The problem is, is that there's not a lot of guys out there uh, that are on the top shelf. You know, a lot of guys do a lot of simping that, you know, they're they run a lot of beta bucks game. Um, you know, they play the friend zone stuff. And, you know, really truthfully, if you want genuine desire, and I talk about this early on in my book and I break it down, grab it to understand it. But if you want genuine burning desire from women, you've got work to do. Anyway, comment below, smash the like button. And uh, if you're new to the channel, hey, I'm Rich Cooper, subscribe. I got lots more coming out for you. We'll see you guys later. Have an awesome day. Peace out.